All right. Start standing on your mat. Kyra, we're not muted. Somewhere. Oh, all right. Now we are. Okay. Feet pointed straight ahead and just gauge. Where's your weight? If you close your eyes, where do you notice your weight on your feet? And is it balanced? Is it more on the outside of one foot, more on the toes of one foot, the heel of one foot? Just give yourself a little bit of a, a check this morning as you are standing there. Bend your knees a bit, check your ankle and knee joints, how do they feel, up into your hips, maybe your ribs and shoulders. Just notice how is all that. And then put your hands right on your rib cage and just take a few deep breaths. Expanding your ribs laterally. Bringing some movement into that expansive quality in the rib cage. You have intercostal muscles between each of the ribs. Your diaphragm that moves down and up as you breathe. Filling the space in your belly as you come take that breath in and pressing it out. Relax your arms. Just notice where they naturally hang. Are your hands a little forward or are they by your side? And then let's go ahead and fold your hands into the golfer's grip and take your arms up, not quite to an elbow curl, but straight up in front of you. And then one at a time, open that arm out and bring it back together. And then other side, out and together. So keeping that square, letting your shoulder blade wrap around the rib cage. A couple more times here, keeping your elbow straight and stable on that path out, not letting it drop or rise up. And then just in case you have some pelvic rotation happening, put your left foot in front of your right foot and let's give your body a really different stimulus as you hug to the midline. So squeeze in. Now, again, he talks about in his tennis video that bringing your feet into this position, let's say you had that trapezius muscle over engaged because the shoulder blade wasn't rotating quite like it should. And then we give this bo your body a different stimulus to stabilize and then ask the shoulder blade to have that rotation again. Maybe the deltoid and trapezius work more correctly and the shoulder blade wraps differently around your torso. That triggers different muscles along the inside of your legs and your trunk to stabilize your body. Potentially, if you have a pelvic rotation or a leg bone that rotates in the hip socket, this will start to move that out as your body has to find a different recruitment pattern. Go ahead and switch your legs. One forward and one back. And again, keep it up there, open and together. Kyra, how far apart are your feet? Uh, one right in front of the other. And you'll notice it, it's challenging to balance, but that recruitment is part of what we're after. When we take the right foot forward, we get this cross body pattern between the right hip and the left shoulder. And that'll change how that left shoulder is needing to stabilize and potentially, again, how that scapula rotates. Good. Both feet pointing straight ahead again. Back to 10 more, out and in.
and release. Come down onto your knees. So we're shortening the lever, which changes your ability to load from the knee to the hip to the shoulder. This vertical load stabilizes differently when we make the two joint hip muscles lengthen. So coming down onto your knees, into shoulder rolls up and back and around. Ten times. Other way, back and up and around. and back again. And then into arm circles, fold your fingers into your palms, bring your arms out to the side, and then pinch your shoulder blades onto your back. Feel that pinch between the shoulder blades, bring your arms up, fold your fingers into your palms, hold that squeeze, circle forward, 20 circles. Really feel on your back, are you getting both shoulder blades to hug the seam onto your back? Getting the thoracic extension, to talk all the way to lumbar extension, you may feel pressure into your low back, especially if there's a touch of scoliosis or a little bit of rotation happening all the way down into the pelvis. And again, it's early for some of us, some of you probably have been awake for a while, but for those of us that just got out of bed, the, the fluid in the discs, puff up the discs and make more space and for some people, that more space makes it much more difficult to move the spine around than for others. Palms up, squeeze the shoulder blades onto your back, relax your stomach. Allow the psoas to be what's kind of stabilizing you and circle backwards. Awesome. Arm glides, unilateral arm glides, one at a time, reaching up over your head and then bring it down. Again, we're asking that shoulder blade to do that glide and different from one side of your thoracic back into the other. Shoulder blade has to rotate around the rib cage come out to the side a little bit and come back down, letting the elbow break. Let that shoulder go all the way up, reach all the way up by your ear and then let it come down. All the way up by your other ear, reach and down. Awesome, come down onto your hands and knees. Cats and dogs. Hands stable, elbows strong, round and arch. And then go into a quadruped rocking. So from here, keep your back really stable and just 
go back as far as your body will let you go until you feel like either your pelvis and leg bones kind of run into each other or where your tailbone wants to start to do what we call the wink. So see how far you can go back. You can take your knees even wider if you want to. How far can you go back before that tailbone tuck starts to happen? And just gently press into that space. Feel your butt muscles have to change length to accommodate that and then come back forward again. Flat spine or neutral spine the whole time. Take it back right to the edge where your tailbone wants to tuck. See if you can go a little farther this time and then back in. Try not to let your hips have a big grip, but just let that move gently backwards and forwards. and then come back to a neutral position. And let's do some neck circles. So first, just neck turn. Bring your head in line with your shoulders and turn your head to the left. And just as if there was a rod through your whole back from your tailbone to the top of your head, allow your head to turn around that, I mean around the other way. And just noticing if you have some differences in the range of motion from one side to the other. Neck work in this position makes the load different because of being on your hands and knees. So gravity working in a really different way than normal, but it gives us some different feedback about what's happening in the muscles around your head and neck. What's good, easy rotation, what creates some pinch or shear, how that moves into any compensation you might have into the shoulder or around the shoulder blade. And then just take your head down and up. So you have a muscle called your levator scapula that lifts the shoulder blade. Right now I want you to keep the shoulder blades down and back, but tuck your chin and lengthen that muscle right up around your occiput, right at the back of your head. That attachment exists. And then bring your ears back over your shoulders and lengthen your chin forward so that the muscle called your sternocleidomastoid, also some scaling, they get lengthened and your neck extensors get some work. And then find deep neck flexors again, tucking your chin all the way before you let your head slide forward. And that's where we minimize some sheer force of having the head slide forward like when we're looking at our phone. and circle. Reverse. And the other way. Awesome, and come down onto your back on the floor, knees bent, arms out to the side. And just let your body settle on the floor for a moment. Just feel your head, maybe move your head side to side. Just notice as your body settles into the floor, how your thoracic back can open in that kind of benign position there.
let's go right into a set of hip flexor lifts. So um, move your left leg away from your body, arms out to the side, shoulders gently tucked into underneath you and then totally relaxed. And then up on your right toes, lift and lower the left leg just so that the knees are both just about pointed up to the ceiling, bring it back down and lift. Everything else here in your trunk stays stable while only the leg lifts and lowers. Did I say 30 of them? If I didn't already, let's do 30. Notice if you have tension anywhere besides the hip. If you have tension in your upper back, see if you can really just allow the floor to completely support that position. And as you come to 30 lifts, switch legs and move that leg long, right leg long, lift and lower 30 times on the, the right leg, left leg up on your toes, to stabilize that hip. And again, really just completely soften your upper body. You want that gentle curve to exist in your neck, gentle rounding in through the thoracic back and slight arch in your low back. In terms of those three layers of compensation, these hip flexors are at that lowest layer, whisper muscles, major stabilizers of the trunk and torso, big time hip, left, hip lifters, primary hip flexor, but very often these muscles are weak actually. Good, hold both legs up. So come into that stabilizing place. And I just want you to imagine that there's two little balls underneath your feet and you're just going to roll that little circle like you're rolling a ball on a on a board and that's going to force more stability or hip flexion to happen. It, you'll have little movement in your hip that really little movement makes all of those hip flexors get recruited. And if you have some maybe adductor that's compensating or, or quad that's compensating, we're going to get that primary hip flexor to do that job. Go the other way, roll imaginary balls with your feet on a platform and just feel how that light touch forces the hip to have to stabilize. And now let's take it into a hip drop. We're gonna borrow from Pilates, everything's stable. Drop the right leg to the floor, pull it up. Drop the left leg to the floor, pull it up. So from that table position, once again, shoulders relaxing all the way down and lift. Using that hip flexor to control it down and up, using some mild abdominal engagement to keep everything else Stable. So transverse abdominis could be engaged. That's that muscle. If you push your fingers into your belly and you push them out, that's that stabilizing muscle of the trunk. And both legs down. Please do a set of pelvic tilt. So stabilize at the leg bone and move the pelvis over the top of the femur. Backward and forward, flattening your back. Noticing if you have both sides doing that action evenly, tucking your tailbone, flattening your low back to the floor, that creating that imprint, and then rolling up to put an arch in your back and feeling those hip flexors that we just worked engage down and up.
Lumbar erectors also engaging in your back body. And then right leg on the floor, left leg pulled in. Keep that right leg really strong and stable. 20 circles all the way around. Keep that left foot. Twenty the other way if you haven't, and twenty point and flexes. Point and flex. you finish those 20 switch legs shoulders down and back 20 circles right leg we use foot circles for so many different things for aligning a pelvic disparity for fixing feet that are turned out for looking at pelvic floor dysfunction even because one side of the pelvic floor is in a different position than the other when we're in this unilateral hip position. We can use foot circles for taking out a shoulder disparity because of this position and how the body is moving all the way up from one side to the other. So in the old EP program, and I've, I've said this before, that if you didn't put any postural dysfunction in, the computer would still put foot circles, point flexes in there. And that it could just work for so many things and so many people. Point and flex. In the Stuart McGill method, he doesn't love it for people who have delaminated discs um, happening because of this much flexion on one side. I have hardly ever seen foot circles um, be a position that isn't okay, but his um, not loving flexion when there's a disc happen is just something to be aware of, I think, for people that are having active sciatic pain or active disc discomfort. And mitigating that maybe even would mean just don't go as into deep hip flexion on one side as is possible. Good. Come on out of that. Roll to your side. Come back to your hands and knees. Tie that all together with cats and dogs once more. Down and arch. Hopefully that feels already much looser than our first set. Like each segment through your spine is moving more smoothly. Maybe if you add one side of your shoulder blade that wasn't able to come all the way together on your back, now that's moving. Maybe your neck feels more free, whatever it is for you. Hopefully we're getting somewhere. And then come onto a plank on your elbows. Take your legs back. From that elbow position, just hold it and breathe. Let's get 30 seconds in there. Feel your thighs, feel your belly, feel your shoulders have to stabilize there. Good. 
and then roll to one side and stabilize in this position for 30 seconds. Hold it up there, keeping your body stiff like a board between the shoulder and the pelvis. As you roll back onto both elbows, I really want you to move like a board, stiff through your trunk, returning back to stable and then rolling up to that other side. Hips and shoulders moving together, feeling how all the muscles around that shoulder blade are recruited to hold you there. For those of us with a little bit of scoliosis, these sidearm planks can be excellent stabilizers and help move the spine back toward neutral. Back to straight and release. Awesome. Hands on the floor, press up. Uh, let's use a downward facing dog pose. Knees really bent to start today. Prioritize the position of your spine. You can even make that wiggly. Just find some freedom of movement, more like water than so rigid. And then begin to walk your hands to your feet or your feet to your hands and use your hip hinge to come up to standing. And then let's come into a triangle pose. So feet wide on your mat and then turn your right toes straight in front of you with the front foot bisecting your back arch. You're more than welcome to use your yoga block if you choose and to bring that yoga block down to the outside of your foot. Shift your hips way to the back. So when you do this triangle, it's mostly in this hip movement. You can even play with that movement a little bit and not a lot of bending in your spine. So the spinal column actually stays pretty straight here. And this shift in your hips, helping you get more hip flexion in the front and this bit of kind of rotation in the back hip. It's not really full hip extension, but hip rotation in the back hip. And then coming to your hand to your leg or hand to the block and then reaching to the sky, coming into that triangle. Tighten up your thigh muscles, press your big toes into the floor, squeeze your back foot into your front heel and just see if your body will flex the hip in the front more and let that front hamstring really just open. And inhale, come up, switch your legs around. Second side, so play with that hip shift again. Just move around in there a little bit. See where those tissues are, how they can feel a little bit more juicy and then take it down. Again, feet hugging towards each other thigh moving up the front of that leg and reaching to the sky. Keeping your big toes down on the floor, draw the kneecap up. And just notice, is it pulling on different muscles on this side than the other? I have almost no hamstring on this one, but totally hamstring on the other side was working and engaged. With a deep breath, inhale, rise up, switch your feet and have even larger stance. 
So moving that back foot back behind you more, bend deeply into this front knee. This is working into that square. And just feel that lunge for a minute. Just feel those muscles work. You can hug that back foot in towards your front foot. You can feel this butt muscle support you on the side. Feel the back of this leg, this hamstring also engaging. And then bring your front forearm to your knee or an option is also hand all the way to the floor. And then bring this top arm into a cactus arm coming up, feeling just like the same movement that we did this morning, our first movement coming down and up. Now gravity is affecting us in a different way, but we're gonna do that same. Yeah, bring it down, feel the shoulder blade rotate over your rib cage coming onto your back and hold it up there, three breaths. Coming up, switch sides. And sinking down. Down to the floor. Or to your forearm to your knee, you choose it. And then open up that shoulder. Feel it move over your back. Down and up a few times maybe. And hold it up there for three breaths. Release it down. Stepping back, back to your downward facing dog pose. Feet pointed straight ahead, and if you can let one heel release and then the other, please do so. And just feel as you root that heel, how does one side feel different than the other side? How can that talk all the way from your heel to your hip, your hip to your shoulder? And then coming down, come into your runner stretch, assisted or regular, bringing your right foot forward and right in front of your left knee, and then tucking your back toes under. Now, if you had active sciatic pain in either one of your legs, this would not be okay to do. As long as you don't have nervy and you just have some tightness, that's fine. So you could have hands up higher on your bench or your block, or even just on your Agoski block or your yoga block, or you can bring your hands all the way to the floor. Bring the weight to the inside of your feet. Feel that hug to the midline and that that hip flexion in the front as the pelvis moves over the top of the femur. You can even try to put a slight arch in your low back and lengthen your body forward. That's a lot for your hamstrings. Big toes really rooted on the ground all the way up, helping to turn that whole leg. Add breath. Come on down. Switch. Just move into that slowly, working your front leg towards straight. And bring the weight once again to the inside of your big toes. Feel your big toes press down on the ground. And then think about that front hip. That front hip is in flexion. We're asking it to flex more. Letting the whole pelvis roll over the top of that femur.
come on down once more into your downward facing dog pose. And this time, if you feel like your upper body is in really good alignment, you can go ahead and work your legs towards straight. If you're still pretty round in your upper body or your lower back, then bend your knees still and prioritize your spine so that you take your hamstrings just a little bit out of it. And then everybody bend your knees and take your feet a bit wider and come into like a horse stance. So your knees are bent out to the side and just more a little bit flowy or watery. Begin to lift one arm up and bring it down and make some shapes with your spine and your body. Just listen to your own body with how that movement wants to happen. You can pull one hip away from the other one. Let your spine turn and gently rotate. Breathe. Move quickly or more slowly than me. Just feel it for yourself. Nice. Take your feet even a little bit wider and just go over from one side to the other. Begin to move into a little deeper lunge on each side and this is where you get to just listen to your own body again it totally depends maybe coming all the way down into that hip feels good maybe that's like no way you feel it for yourself just explore some deeper ranges of motion as we have that chemical equation of letting ATP and calcium move to let muscle contraction and relaxation happen as those spindles move over each other and we get more length. Good, come back to feet in a little bit, go back into your horse stance once again, get more stable, come back through that one, opening it up. Maybe both hands come behind you and open those arms that way. See if your spine wants to move with your arms that way. Bend and straighten your legs. And then use that hip hinge to come all the way back to standing. And bring it in. And then let's find your balance. We'll do some, a little bit of hip work here. So just feel first how balance comes to you today. Is it easy? And then go into that hip flexion. So bring your leg all the way up, whichever one you're on. And then move that leg out to the side. Bring it back in. Set it down. Switch. Hip flex all the way up. Just notice how is that. Open that knee wide, keeping your torso to the front. Back in and release. Good. First side again. Lift. Hip flexion. This time let's go into hip extension. So keeping that leg, letting it go behind you, and lifting it all the way up, but keep your torso as vertical as possible. How far does that leg want to go? And if it wants to turn out to the side a little bit, I'm okay with that right now. That helps that glute get recruited. So lift that leg. Keep your torso upright. You can even take your arms up if you want. All the way through that whole side of your body. Back to hip flexion. And release. Second side. Hip flex. All the way up. Then into hip extension, letting it slide behind you, keeping your body upright. Your abs have to lengthen a little bit, but they shouldn't be what just lengthens the most. And some of us have tight hips and our ab is that looser spring. So you might need to pull that up and in a little bit till you get to your butt muscle, feel that butt muscle. And again, if the leg turns slightly out to the side, that's okay with me today. Just recruit that glute, find it. 
And if you could send your arms up and keep going up there with that back leg lifted higher, higher, higher. And come back up through and release. Awesome. One more. Take your leg out to the side. Take it up there as high as you can. Keep your body as straight up and down as possible. Mine wants to go to the side, but keep working it straight. Get that leg higher, 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 higher. Find those adductor, abductors of the hip and back down. Second side. Lift. Torso staying straight. Good. Lift it up there. Keep working your torso more straight as it wants to go over more. Get it up there. Find those inside leg muscles that help stabilize that whole thing too a little higher and release. Excellent. Find a spot for your squat or air bench. Well, let's do 10 squats today. 10 squats. Let's do free squats. Hold your arms up and you have an option here. You can just go down and up. You could also go up onto your toes just slightly. That'll be more recruitment for your ankles and the back of your leg, that instability that just forces some more muscles to fire. And you take it down to the place where you're comfortable and then press it back up and see if you can feel calves, hamstrings as you go down the soleus and gastroc engage as the knees bend, butt muscles and hamstrings and press back up. Back muscles stabilize. You could even go hands into that sphere, like our foundation training sphere. Ooh. And release. All right, just check that out. Feel. What's your ease of motion? Check your feet again, like we did in the beginning. I can see in the camera, so I can see my hips are more level. That's often where I start out as a little wonky in the morning. How about you? How does it feel to you today? Hopefully more balanced, more freedom. Maybe you notice your hands are hanging on the side of your body again, like mine, instead of that back of the hand. Or if you can see your collarbones, hopefully they're just naturally laying more flat on your, on your torso or your chest. Okay, find your seat or lie down. You choose. And first, as you come into this position, just notice how you can drop back from the things of personhood, anything that makes you attached to your name and your relationships and the things you have to do today. Step out of the place of your person and have awareness of your being. And notice that that awareness is only and always present in the present moment. Allow sensations to exist in space. Sensations like body resting on the floor, breath moving in and out of body. And 
and allow the body mind to settle. In that field of sensation, drop any effort that you're making to be the meditator. And just be. Notice any and all things that are arising right here. And notice if you can find a point of awareness. Often what we notice is that there's an idea that awareness is happening in your head. But when you actually look for that point of awareness, you can't find it. Certainly not just in the head. As you notice this resting place, notice that there's a natural joy and peace. recognize that this space is always 
with you, always available. It is that which you are. And begin to bring more conscious breath back into your body. Once again, notice the sensations of your body being supported however it is on the floor. And before you open your eyes, just notice once more the expanse of the visual field, even with your eyes closed, but that that could be maintained as you open your eyes. And although that adds a lot of stimulus, you can also still be right here in the present moment with that sensation. <laughs> 